Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to talk about the mastery curve. The concept is taken from George Leonard's book Mastery. The concept in its most essential form is that in terms of learning and progress, effort does not equal outcome. This little concept can be applied to almost everything that we do in life. Just think about everything that has the potential for progress in life, career development, relationship development, self-development, cooking, parenting, making YouTube videos, video games, learning a language, playing a sport, playing an instrument. You get the point, but this topic can be applied to almost anything that requires you to progress. So here's the breakdown. Somewhere on the screen, probably right over here, there's an image with two different curves. The first curve is one where effort equals outcome. It's a perfect one-to-one -one ratio. However much effort you put into something is exactly what you're going to get in turn. And this is what we call the imaginary curve because in real life, effort doesn't correlate to outcome. It's not you give so you get. This just isn't how most of life is. Now the second curve is the natural learning curve or the mastery curve as Leonard called it in his book. Now this curve depicts more the accuracy of progress in which there are relatively brief spurts in progress. Sometimes there are declines in progress and a lot of the time there's just a very 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 long plateau where you're not moving forward at all. And this is reality. Sometimes you get better at things, sometimes you get worse. Most of the time you're putting in a ridiculous amount of effort and getting nowhere. And I think this is huge because honestly, it's so hard sometimes to keep going and keep practicing and keep putting effort when you're not seeing any results and you're not getting anything in return. To continue investing your time, energy, and resources into something that seems like a dead end, who would want to do that? But it is this exact experience that leads people to abandon their resolutions and give up. It leads people to think they really aren't good at something and they never will be because nothing's happening for them right now. They're not getting any better. They're not getting any fame. They're not getting any money. Because let's face it, we've all had those moments where we've tried to start a new project or pick up a new hobby or do something new just to quit in despair a few weeks later. Trust me, I've been there. I know you've probably been there. We've all been there. And that's why this is so important because it can help prevent you from getting discouraged. It can encourage you to keep working hard even if there aren't any returns now because one day you're gonna break through your plateau and it's gonna be glorious. I know hearing this once isn't gonna be enough to change your mind about it. It isn't gonna be enough to break bad habits and thought patterns and there's gonna still be moments when you feel utterly discouraged and you want to call it quits and you want to give up but maybe just maybe having this in the back of your mind one day it may come up and you may think Maybe I should keep going because I know one day I'm eventually gonna break through this plateau. But first you need to know the mindsets that prevent you from trekking on when you feel that there's relatively not enough reward to keep you going. In his book, Leonard mentions three attitudes towards skill development that inevitably guarantee failure. The first mindset is the dabbler. And like the name suggests, this is the person who never goes to the deep end. They dive into new projects and hobbies and relationships with such enthusiasm, but then they lose interest once things get hard, once they stop seeing the returns. Instead of continuing with that path, they decide, hey, this is no longer good for me. They convince themselves that I don't need to be doing this anymore. I don't want to be doing this anymore. Let me find something else to do. They start lots of projects, lots and lots of projects, but they end up leaving a lot of things unfinished because when things get hard, they get bored. They just move on to something else. The second attitude that Leonard expresses is the obsessive. These are the people who are intensely goal-oriented and they live for the results. This is the person who starts off with a bang, making a lot of progress in the beginning. And when that progress starts to slow, they redouble their effort and continue making more progress and more progress, but that isn't sustainable. Eventually, they crash and burn because they just can't keep it up. It gets too exhausting. This is also the person who would happily kill themselves in pursuit of reaching their goals. The third and last mindset that Leonard warns against is the hacker. This is the person who lives almost exclusively in their comfort zone. They accept their own mediocrity instead of taking opportunities or finding opportunities to advance. The hacker is content to stay on the plateau indefinitely, doing the bare minimum, and never really progressing. This is the person who doesn't work to their full potential, doesn't like new, doing new things, and isn't very ambitious overall. And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that you are this person or I'm this person or anyone is this person. I'm saying that these are more tendencies to think a certain way because these are mindsets, not types of people. You don't need to be a certain type of person to fall into a bad mindset every once in a while. Looking back, I can definitely recognize times in my life where all three of 
that these mindsets have come to play. I've been the person who wants to move on instead of stick with something. I've been the person to exhaust myself trying to progress. And I've also been the person not going after greatness because I was comfortable with good. It's not awful, it's nothing to be ashamed of. I feel like everyone falls into at least some of these categories every once and again. But it's good to be aware of these things. It's good to know how these may get in the way so that maybe in the future, you can recognize it and say, hey, let me take a step back and change my mindset. Ultimately, Leonard's book is about facing the plateau by cultivating a love for the plateau. I'm actually gonna quote his book. He says, if our life is a good one, a life of mastery, most of it will be spent on the plateau. If not, a large part of it may well be spent in restless, distracted, ultimately self-destructive attempts to escape the plateau. What this means is that stalling is perfectly natural. Going backwards is perfectly natural. This is okay. There's no need to second guess yourself. There's no need to second guess your path. Just keep going. In cultivating a love for the plateau, you have to work on changing your mindset from a result-oriented one to a process-oriented one. Which means you gotta do things because you actually enjoy doing them, because you wanna do them, because you love to do them. Not just because of what they can bring you or just to get better at something or just to see yourself improve at it. Those are all really nice and those are all bonuses is, but they're not going to sustain you through the tough periods, through the plateaus, through the fallbacks. You have to truly like doing things for their own sake, separate from any benefit that they might bring you. You have to set realistic goals, you have to expect plateaus, take your mind off the goal for a little bit and enjoy the moment of actually doing things and practicing. Enjoy practicing something. Don't just see it as a means to an end. Even if you're not progressing now, if you continue with consistent and sustained effort and enjoy yourself along the way, you will get there and it'll feel like nothing at all because you had such a good time doing it. Also, if it's not necessary, don't put a time limit on anything. Tell yourself that you have the rest of your life to do something, even if you'd like to do it a lot sooner than that. Relax, stop rushing yourself. It becomes harder to focus on what you're doing and probably makes it a lot less enjoyable if you're thinking about the time. Basically, what I'm saying is that in life, effort does not equal outcome. You may have to put in a hundred times more effort than you think to get one little outcome, but that's life. And you're not doing anything wrong if that's the case. You're not bad at something. You're not gonna, don't say that you're never gonna get better at it because that is not the case. Practice, practice, practice. I know you've heard this a million times and you'll hear it a million more, but it's so true. You just gotta keep doing it and find ways to love what you're doing because in the end, it's not gonna reward you all the time. It's not gonna say, oh, because you're doing this so great. Here's this reward and here's that reward and here's this reward and here, have another reward. Life's not like that. But if you can enjoy what you're doing genuinely, it won't feel, it won't be so rough. It won't be so harsh. You won't feel like the need to give up all the time when something doesn't go your way. Sometimes you gotta learn to love the plateau. That's what he's basically saying in his book. I hope I did an adequate job explaining the book and I hope you can use this in your everyday life and you can realize when you have poor mindsets that are holding you back and yeah I hope you can make yourself better with me as I make myself better. <laughs> all right well that's all I have to say this time guys so I will see you next time. Bye! He wants to stuff my face and not give me a kiss. I, Coda, I got you.